My name is Andrew Lyons. I am a veteran. I served from 2003 to 2007 on active duty as a medic, 91 whiskey. And then from 2007 to 2010, I served three years in the Iowa National Guard, also as a medic, and then for a short time as a forward observer. During my time on active duty, I did two short deployments to Iraq. And I am making this video in support of Ron Paul, and I'm making it for the Ron Paul Veterans for Ron Paul uh, 2012 Facebook page. I've made a lot of videos. I have my own, my own YouTube channel, and I make a lot of videos talking about the issues and Ron Paul and why his positions are appealing to me and why I try to sell them to people through my videos. But, um, you know, those videos that I make are... I, I kind of plan them out a little bit. I get somewhat of an outline, and I kind of just uh, stick to an outline so I can be the most effective. But for this, I thought it might be important to just kind of speak from the heart and just let it flow. I mean, my other videos are also from the heart, too. I just try to make them, them a little more organized because, you know, I'm looking for an end result and try to persuade people. But, but Ron Paul, I mean, the first thing that drew me to him was his stance on foreign policy and I caught wind of this back back around oh late late 2008 2009 era I heard this guy you know maybe I caught it by a YouTube video I can't even remember heard him talking about I think he was in a, in a debate with Rudy Giuliani talking about these terrorists they don't come over here and attack us because we're rich and we're free they come here and they attack us because we're over there messing in their business and at first, I have to admit, I thought I was kind of, I was still in the mindset of believing everything the TV told me and thinking, there's no way. That's, it's, it's all because they're, they're, it's an Islamic jihad and everybody over there wants to kill us. And, you know, I really thought that, that was the case. But you know what? Something, something clicked in my head when he said that. Uh, you know, the, the next day or the day after, I can't even remember. But I remember I, I was thinking about it for a while. And I started to put myself in the shoes of, you know, maybe an Iraqi or an Af in Afghan or, or somebody who lives in a country that we've invaded or have dropped bombs on. And I, I really tried to detach myself from my, my current position and put myself in their shoes. And the more and more I did that, I started to understand, started to understand, yeah, that, okay, that makes sense. I want to know more. And so I started going on YouTube, looking up more videos, uh, going to his website, things like that, just trying to, to learn as much as I could about it. And the more I, I digged into it, the more I researched, the more it just made sense. And at the same time, I was starting to realize that this guy is not your average politician. I mean, here I was, you know, a young 26, 27-year-old man. You know, I'm still young. I'm, you know, I'm in my 30s now, but... You know, I, I thought that I had found my political identity, but I, I really hadn't. I found Ron Paul, and I started exploring his ideas, exploring his, his positions on things. And I realized he really takes his oath of office seriously. Everybody takes an oath to, to uphold that Constitution. Everyone, every senator, every, house, every uh, representative, president, military members, federal workers, Whoever, he's the only one that I've ever seen that has a 100% constitutional voting record. And the more and more I dug into it, you know, you find out that he's never voted for a tax increase. He's never voted for an unbalanced budget. And he, he's a, his foreign policy of non-interventionism is very appealing to me because it goes back to the Constitution as well. Uh, Article 1, Section 8, is under the powers of Congress of the Constitution to, to declare war. And, you know, I kind of, the more and more I started connecting the dots, I started to realize that we are having presidents nowadays unilaterally, unilaterally go to war on their own without the, the permission of Congress. And that's dangerous. That's really dangerous. And that's not what our founders intended. They lived under uh, the rule of a king where one person made all the decisions and our founders set up a system of checks and balances intentionally to, to uh, make it so we would not have that type of system. 
And we are drifting towards that so quickly. The, the Patriot Act in 2001, Ron Paul adamantly opposed that, that Patriot Act. And I have to admit, I didn't even really know anything about the Patriot Act until probably 2006 or 2007, in, you know, in, in full detail anyways. And I never realized that that um, was the antithesis of the Fourth Amendment. And now with the National Defense Authorization Act of 2011, now we have a, pretty much a complete decimation of the Bill of Rights, you know, with the exception of the Third Amendment, which is kind of obsolete anyways. And now we have this SOPA coming down, down, down the pipe, trying to regulate the Internet. And it's just becoming so out of control. We're, we're slipping into something that, that is uh, not in the tradition of this country. We are giving up all of our liberties for a false sense, at least in my opinion, of security or some kind of sense of security. And, you know, I kind of agree with, with Franklin. Uh, people who give up liberty for security deserve neither. And the first thing that Ron Paul wants to do, his first and foremost obligation, is to protect civil liberties and to protect uh, in the national defense as president. And he understands that. He understands that our rights do not come from a government. How, how many politicians do we hear saying that our rights come from our creator, not our government? He, he, he vehemently opposes things like the Patriot Act, the National Defense Authorization Act, that just are a, are a terrible erosion of our civil liberties, of our natural rights given to us by our creator. And he preaches this stuff all the time. No one else, no one else is talking about these things. And if they were, they would probably be in support of them. Sad to say, but that's, that's true. Especially since the, the National Defense Authorization Act passed 86 to 14 in, in the Senate or, or something like that. It was, it was pretty overwhelming. But um, he, he's the only one who will stand up for our civil liberties. He's the only one who's gonna follow the Constitution. He's the only one who's gonna have a wise foreign policy that is focused on, on uh, the rule of law and the Constitution and going to war only when our national security is threatened and not jumping, not having all these knee-jerk reactions every time there's a perceived threat around the world. Every time we do this, every time we drop bombs on a country that, uh, that hasn't attacked us, trying to get, you know, one or two targets, you know, maybe 30, 40 people die in the process who are innocent, and that creates more enemies from their loved ones. So a wise foreign policy where we're not the bullies of the world. I mean, we kind of look at ourselves as the policemen of the world, but I think the rest of the world looks at us as just a big bully. So, yeah, foreign policy, yeah, it's wise, it's, it makes sense, it's constitutional. He wants, to, he wants to defend our civil liberties, obey the Constitution at all costs, the rule of law must be followed, and um, he's the only one who under, truly understands the economic problems we're in because he actually got into Congress because uh, in 1971, when they cut the tide of the gold standard under the Nixon administration, that's when he was spurred to go run for Congress. I think it was in 76, because he, everybody was heralding this great thing that we cut ties from the gold standard. But he, he Ron Paul being a, a connoisseur of economics, he realized it's not a good thing. This is a terrible thing. It's gonna end up in major disaster. And look what's happened, he's been correct. But the, you know, he's has, is saying now that the, ma the biggest disaster is on the horizon if we don't turn this around soon. And he's the only one talking about that as well. You know, our, our GDP is equal to our national debt right now, and that's normally the point of no return uh, for a hyperinflation scenario. And if you're not familiar with that, you can look up some examples. Uh, I'd highly encourage looking at the example back in the 20s in Germany uh, before the, the rise of the Nazi party. But yeah, he's the only one talking about these things, and he's the only one looking out for us. He's financially backed by his, his three biggest donors are the United States Army, Navy, and Air Force. Uh, in comparison, like Mitt Romney's biggest supporters are Goldman Sachs, the Seuss Group, and uh, I think J.P. Morgan Chase, Wall Street banks. So, who it it just goes to show that. I think a big reflection of who, who a politician is going to be working for is who funds their campaigns. And 
he didn't support, Ron Paul didn't support the bailouts, so the banks don't support him, but you know what? Ron Paul supports the troops, so the, so the troops support him right back. And he knows that he has a wise foreign policy in store for us. So I know this is kind of lengthy, but I get kind of talkative when I'm talking about issues and Ron Paul and things like that. But uh, that is why I support Ron Paul 2012.